Hello all, my name is uh, Azo Williams. I'm a junior psychology major at the University of the Virgin Islands, Albert A. Sheen campus. And I'm also a Mark Scholar with the Emerging Caribbean Scientist Program. For the past year, I have been working with my mentors, uh, Dr. Aletha Bauman at the University of the Virgin Islands, Dr. Karin Schoen at Boston University, and Dr. Schoen's graduate student, a UVI graduate, Michael Rosario, who is also at Boston University. And my study has been trying to predict executive functioning in older Afro-Caribbean adults from subjective social status, perceived discrimination, and late life depression. So executive functioning is defined as you know, a collection of higher level cognitive processes that take place in, within the neural connections of the frontal lobe. Uh, so executive functioning includes inhibitory control, uh, your working memory, cognitive flexibility, which is think, can you think about one thing and then think about another thing and then think about another thing and then think about another thing uh, and not falter in the concepts that you're thinking about. That's a very rough uh, definition of it. And obviously the most famous of any of the processes that take place in the frontal lobe, also logical reasoning. And uh, there is little research about executive functioning in older black people. Subjective social status is defined as an individual's perception of their own position in social hierarchy, and that position can be community-wise or can be uh, nationwide. And is also associated with several measures of uh, socioeconomic status, such as education, finance, and occupation, and is off related to be to marriage and race. Uh, perceived discrimination is an individual's perception of the negative detrimental treatment of their group, which can be either racial, ethnic, national, or other groups. Uh, perceived discrimination has been found to sh have an inverse relationship with cognition in older adults. So if someone's uh, perceived discrimination is high, then their cognition will be lower um, when they're older. And there is little research about perceived discrimination in older Black people. So late life depression is defined as a major depressive episode that happens to a person that is at least 40 years old. Now, this time frame is arbitrary it differs based on scholars but we the scholars have decided that at least 40 years old is uh, a great place to start when talking about late life depression and late life depression has also been found to be related to the denigration of executive functioning in older african americans but again there is still limited research on late life depression in black people so for my study uh, I will be looking to see if subjective social status will moderate the relationship between perceived discrimination and depression on executive functioning in older Afro-Caribbean adults on St. Croix. So the participants will be 60 Afro-Caribbean men and women aged between 50 and 80 years old. Um, there are a couple pre-screening things that need to happen. Um, if they cannot see when they're doing it, um, if they have glasses, then they can do it. If they have contacts, then they can do it. But if they cannot see, then they cannot take the uh, the test, the instruments for the study. Um, if they are cognitively impaired based on the pre-screening form, then uh, we can't. They cannot partake partake inside of the study. Um, they need to at least speak or read a little bit of English um, in order, because this is an English study, in order to partake in the study. Uh, the independent variables will be late life depression, perceived discrimination. Uh, my moderating variable, but still independent variable, is subject of social status. My dependent variable will be executive functioning inside of the study. So uh, for the instruments, for the independent variables, I'll be using the, for late life depression, the geriatric depression scale. And that's just asking about things that depression may affect. And an example of a question may be, are you basically satisfied with your life? And I'll answer between yes and no. For perceived discrimination, I'll be using the experiences of discrimination questionnaire, and that's just looking at experiences of discrimination that people may feel on a day-to-day -day basis. An example, maybe like you were not hired for a job, and they, if they answer no, then they don't answer. They don't have to do anything else. If they answer yes, then they have to answer by selecting, you know, if it's their race, ethnicity, gender, age, religion, sexual orientation that they feel that they didn't get the job because of. Uh, another question may be, uh, if, have you been followed in the store? And they answer again by selecting yes and no. If no, they don't answer. If they yes, then 
you know, selecting race, ethnicity, gender, age, religion, and physical appearance. Uh, for the uh, moderating variable, the instrument is going to be the subject of social status ladder, and the mock author is subject of social status ladder, and we'll be asking them two questions. The first question is asking them, where do you see yourself on the ladder for uh, your community? And they'll answer between one worst off and 10 best off. And then we'll ask them, uh, where do you see yourself in your society? And again, they'll place, place themselves on in the runs of the ladder from one worst off and 10 best off. So for the dependent variable, they'll be using the trail making test B. And it's the very basic test. Uh, we're asking them to go from uh, number to letter in sequential order. So if it's 1A, then 2B, then 3C, and they'll continue that until the test is completely over. So as many researchers um, will have said this day, this research conference, um, yeah, COVID-19 happened. Uh, hate that it did, but you know, it did. So um, in March, when COVID-19 truly became a pandemic or an epidemic, uh, the UVI and um, Boston University IRB, so Institutional Review Boards, decided to suspend research, in-person research, um, until further notice. And we still, the research is still suspended because COVID-19 is still here. Um, but uh, the group that I'm doing my research with, Dr. Bauman, Dr. Schoen, Michael Rosario, and uh, research um, assistant Alex Sankar are looking to see if we can create this study, but make it um, not in person. So we're trying to see if we can mail, if we can do stuff through mail, if we can call people and give them the test. Uh, so really hope that works. Um, but the research we were not able to do, not able to continue it um, for this research conference. So a lot of the research that we have is just very, very basic, very descriptive. So, so when research or my research is finished, I will we'll be able to do linear regression models to see if the independent variables, the subject of social status, which is also the moderating variable, uh, perceived discrimination, late night depression, will predict the dependent variable, which is executive functioning, and our participants who are older Afro-Caribbean adults. But we do have some current descriptive results before <laughs> COVID-19 happened and the research suspension happened. So currently we have six participants that completed the geriatric depression scale, the experiences of discrimination scale, and trail making test B for the study. And three of those participants have completed the MacArthur Subjective Social Status Questionnaire. Now, I must explain that this data, the results look kind of weird, but only because there is a larger study that I'm a part of that I'm taking my uh, results from. The study has two visits, two study visits. It's being headed by Dr. Bauman and Dr. Karin Schoen and Michael Rosario. And for the first visit, the geriatric depression scale, experience of discrimination, and trail making test B are all on there. For the second visit, it's the MacArthur Subject of Social Status Questionnaire. So all of my participants were not able to complete the MacArthur Subject of Social Status Questionnaire, but that is why the data looks kind of weird, or the descriptive results looks kind of weird. Uh, these are my references for this paper. Uh, that's all for presentation one, folks. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the Alzheimer's Association, Boston University. University of the Virgin Islands and the Emerging Caribbean Scientist Mark Program. Uh, thank you to Dr. Bauman, Dr. Karen Schoen, Michael Rosario, Dr. Teresa Turner, and my research partner, <laughs> Alex Ankar. Um, does anyone have any questions?